Not that strong, resounding applause to that speech. Thank you, Jesus. At this juncture, let me welcome Reverend Father Hilary, the Assistant Parish of Priest of the Holy Trinity Catholic Church. Please come to this side of the table. You are welcome to this side of the table. Now, the next program on the item will be done, and I know justice will be done on that, by no other person than them, falling, falling, parties. The presentation of the biography. Thank you, then. Thank you very much. Yes, go ahead, brother. <laughs> uh, uh, Reverend Father, see our presence. Reverend sisters, members of the Holy Family Society. Holy Family. Holy Family. Holy Family. Congratulations as we all mark our 24th inception of the Holy Family Society in Nigeria. We thank God for the life of our founder and his dear wife, Sir David Osunde, and dear Mary Joan. As we all celebrate this yearly event, and also immortalizing our dear late Archbishop Patrick Ebosele Eko, our spiritual father and Christian of faith. As we gather here today, the 1st of November 2024, to immortalize the name of Archbishop Patrick Ebersole Ekpo by launching four new spiritual initiatives in his honor, the Holy Family Society is proud to present the key aspect of his life, which makes him stand tall as a towering figure to us as human beings as follows. On the 26th of October, 1931. He was born in Urome, Edo State, where his native language is Isan. In 1942, he then moved to Benin City to live with his elder sister as his circumstances changed. He was fortunately being directed by the Holy Spirit, making his elder sister to also enroll him for his primary school education at Holy Cross Primary School, Benin City. On the 12th of June, 1946, he was baptized at the Holy Cross Cathedral, Benin City, by Reverend Father Thomas Atley, an Irish priest assigned to work at Holy Cross Cathedral at that time. In 1948, he completed his basic primary school education at St. Joseph Primary School, Benin City. In 1949, he began his secondary school education at Immaculate Conception College, Benin City. In January 1950, he gained admission into St. Paul's Minor Seminary, Benin City. In January 1951, he proceeded to St. Teresa's Minor Seminary, okay, Array in Ibadan. In September 1955, he proceeded to the major seminary in Benin City. In January 1957, he was among the pioneer students when the major seminary was officially moved from Benin City to Bojinja in Ibadan. On the 7th of July 1963, he was ordained priest by Bishop. Patrick Kelly of the SMA at St. Anthony Catholic Church, Uromi, his hometown. On the 5th of July, 1971, he was appointed co-adjutant bishop of Benin City by Pope Paul VI. On the 21st 
of November 1971, he was ordained as the first indigenous bishop of Benin City at the Holy Cross Cathedral in Benin City. On the 5th of July 1973, he was installed as the substantive bishop of Benin City at Holy Cross Cathedral, Benin City. On the 6th of April 1975, he founded the Religious Institute of the Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. On the 9th of May 1991, he founded the Knighthood Order of St. Paul. On the 26th of March 1994, he was appointed as the first Archbishop of Benin City by Pope St. John Paul II. On the 21st of November 2006, he retired as Archbishop of Benin City. On the 6th of August 2024, he passed on peacefully to the great beyond in Benin City at the age of 92. While a number of priests, the Sacred Heart Sisters, and some of his family members were around his bed praying for him. How lucky. On the 22nd of August 2024, he was laid to rest at the mausoleum which he himself built in the basement of the Holy Cross Cathedral, Benin City. The plan of God in Archbishop Echo's life, having taken note of the pleasant historical and spiritual development in the life of late Archbishop Patrick Ebersale Echo, as presented above, one can only, can anyone who must have read between the lines point out the joyful coincidences that clearly reveal God's plan for the late prelate? If you have not been able to discern this at this point in time, please go back and read his biography again and again. By the time you read it the third time, you will discover that. One, it was at Holy Cross School, Benin City, that he began his primary school education. You will also discover that it was also at Holy Cross Cathedral, on the same prim premises as the primary school he first attended, that he was baptized. Thus, it was here that he gave his life to Christ, having been born again in baptism. Three. It was in the same Holy Cross Cathedral that he was ordained the first indigenous bishop of Benin City when he also became the co-adjutor bishop. Four, it was also in the same Holy Cross Cathedral that he was installed as the substantive bishop of Benin City. Five, when Pope John Paul II now canonized as a saint on April 27, 2014, appoint, he appointed him Archbishop of Benin City in 1994. It was in the same Holy Cross Cathedral that a lot of preparation for his installation were made, but because of the size of the crowd that was being expected at that time, the actual ceremony took place at the then newly in renovated St. Paul's Catholic Church, Airport Road, Benin City. This was after he had received his pallium from the hands of Pope John Paul II at the Vatican on the solemnity of St. Peter and Paul on June 29, 1994. When on August 6, 2024, the Archbishop Emeritus, as he was named after the, his retirement on, on November 26, 2006 passed away, his body was brought to the same Holy Cross Cathedral, Benin City, on the memorial of the Queenship of the Lady of the Blessed Virgin Mary on the 22nd of August 2024, where a funeral mass was held in his honor and attended by thousands of people to bid him farewell. Funeral Mass of late Archbishop Ekpo. Holy Cross Cathedral, Benin City, became a gathering place for most Catholic bishops in Nigeria who attended the funeral mass. 
it was clear to all that the church spiritual fathers were eager to see the late Archbishop spiritually ascend to the narrow path where a supersonic speed train awaited to carry him to heaven. Many family members, friends, well-wishers, and the worshiping community controllably shed tears, particularly on the day, on that day. But none could defy the consequences of boarding the same supersonic speed train conveying Archbishop Echo to his special abode in heaven. After saying their goodbyes, and as the crowd dispersed, a number of clergy, including mostly sisters of the Sacred Heart, led by se several bishops, ensured that other funeral rites were perform performed before laying him to rest at the mausoleum he had built many years ago at the same Holy Cross Cathedral in Benin City. Can we all now see what God's plan was for him, for the late Archbishop Echo? Could it have been possible for anyone to change that plan? No. Let us therefore, in all sincerity, continue to follow God's plan in our own lives and not work relentlessly to change God's plan for others. Let it be clear now that those who sometimes pretend to be playing God cannot change God's plan for our lives. Let everyone be attuned to God to know that to know what plan he has for them. When we do this, we will discover that it is better to follow God's plan in our lives. May the soul of Archbishop Patrick Ebosoli echo rest in perfect peace. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God Rest in perfect peace. Amen. Sir David E. Osunde, founder, national coordinator, Holy Family Society, Nigeria. Can we all join our hands for this wonderful spiritual father who has taken time to go through the biography from the day he was born to the day he was laid to rest and taken by the supersonic to heaven. May we all promote praying families worldwide in our homes and be sent out of our families. I thank you all for listening and may God continue to bless our founder, strengthen him and his family to continue to do the good work he has been doing. Thank you. Holy Family, like I said earlier on, see the way then digested it. Those were written by Sir David Osunde, but very well read. Let us clap our then. Um, uh, DJ, you give us light music while we go straight to the next agenda, the cutting of the cake. I will call on them, Pauline, our then to come to the podium for the cutting of the cake, our father, the Reverend Sisters, Barrister Mecca, Mrs. Tinye Chuku, LSJ, uh, where is Mrs. Unima? Uh, we have to the mama, the chair lady, the chair, ma, chair, the chair person of the Holy Prophet Society in this uh, meeting. We have his money. She's no longer around. Mommy, Ama, we have his money. She's not here. Emmanuel, please come around while we do the needful to call the king. Mr. Richard from Veritas University, you are very much welcome. Sorry, please, my manners are really no.
You know, we've been out for some time. I had to fly in yesterday for Katina because of this. Uh, please, we call this cake by saying Holy Family three times. We can okay, Father has agreed with me that we should count it complete one by one as we mark our twenty-fourth anniversary. That's very wonderful. Money you will be there next year. We are going to do the silver jubilee. And I promise we are going to do it the big way. God will do it. We start the cutting of the cake by saying one, give me two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Advice. We waited for you for a long time. 
but I think you have something else busy doing. But you just give us word of advice. At least our team then is here. Please just give us some word of advice while we continue the other part of the issue. You are not supposed to give us a spiritual talk, but because of the time, give us lots of advice. Thank you very much. Holy Family. Holy Family. Holy Family. Good afternoon to you all. Uh, first of all, we welcome you once again to Holy Trinity Parish, Maitama. I am welcoming you on behalf of the parish priest and all of us members of the Holy Trinity Parish. So you are welcome. Feel at home. Enjoy your stay here. And also remain blessed as you stay with us. Now, um, for the spiritual talk, I was told since today we are celebrating all saints, so we should talk about saint food and also linking it with the family. Now, when we are talking about saint food, we will see a saint as one who has lived a virtuous life and is now with God in heaven. That is the direct definition that we can give to sainthood. One who has lived a virtuous life and is now with God in heaven. According to the Catholic Church, there are various stages that we, you know, use before we confirm somebody a saint. There are various stages that the person has to go through before the person is confirmed a saint. Now, first of all, the person is um, venerated. Veneration, that is, the person's life is being seen as, oh, this person lived an exemplary life, a good life. And so they start looking up to the person. Then the person is made a blessed. So the person now, okay, the church now comes to know more about the person. And then after that, the person is canonized a saint. This is when the church now says, oh, we are sure. After her investigation, it is established that this person is in heaven. It takes time. It is a rigorous process. So they want to be sure before they can do it, say that this person is in heaven. So that is why it takes all of these steps. Because it is better not to talk or call somebody, say for example, if maybe I die and they are not very sure, it is better not to call me a saint than to call me a saint and it turns out that I am not a saint. You understand? So that is why they take all this long process. But now it does not mean it is only those persons who have been mentioned out that are saints. Because there are a lot more who have not been named that are saints. So, despite all of the ones that we call or know as saints, there are many more who are still saints today. And what makes them saints? What makes them saints is the good life that they live. The way that they live their life here on earth. That is what made them sense. So now, as families, how do we help ourselves to become sense? There's something that Saint Teresa of Avila said. She said, all the way to heaven is heaven itself. That is, the way to heaven is heaven itself. Now, let me make an example. During the Mass, we saw a seminarian with us on the altar. Now, the seminarian... If you look at him, he dress the same cassock that I put on is the same cassock that he also puts on. And most times when people see him, they accord him the kind of respect that they also accord to me. You understand? They accord him similar respect. Why? Because he's already on a way of becoming, to become a priest. So originally, if we go to eat, he will come and sit beside us to, to eat. If we are going for functions, he will go for functions with us because he has already started the journey. So he has already started also experiencing what it means to be a priest. 
So St. Teresa said, the way to heaven is heaven itself. So if we want to make it to heaven, it is not the day that we die that our sainthood begins. It begins right from our life. There is no how you want to be in connection with God. And while you are alive, you do not connect with him. Then it's when you die that you want to see yourself with God. Can it work? Can it work? It cannot work. So we have to start from the first day of our life. Our calling itself is a calling, is a call to holiness as Christians. Our calling is a call to holiness. So meaning it's a call to sainthood. So meaning our life alone is what? A life of sainthood, a life of holiness. So we have to live according to this life so that at the end also when we just graduate, it will just be a change of place. Some persons or some errors we have when it pertains to sainthood, some persons feel the church is wrong or Christians are wrong by praying through the saints. Because for them it's like we are talking to dead people. Holy family, holy family, have you or have you seen somebody talking to a dead person? And the person responds, huh? That is to say that the saints are not dead, right? The saints are not dead. So we praying through the saints is a reminder that there is life after our mortal death. It's a reminder that there is life after our mortal death. So just as we live a holy life, when we die, it is only a change of place or address or location as we change to heaven. So we are encouraged in our families now to see how we can strive to encourage each other because everybody is fighting for their salvation. To encourage each other to win this heaven. So we should see how we can struggle. Many of the saints that we have today, it is through the influence of their families that they became saints. I think the, this thing I saw, the brochure you made, the brochure you made, I saw behind it, I saw something like that that connected. Many of the families, many of the saints we have, is the families that impacted on them or that influenced them that they became saints. One of the great examples I like to make use of is Saint Augustine. Saint Augustine lived a wayward life, but his mother kept on struggling and she said, This my son must come back to God. And at the end, he came back to God. So in our own families also, we should ask ourselves, how are we ensuring that our husband, our wife, our children, our parents, our brothers and our sisters also make heaven? So we should remember that while you struggle for your salvation, while you struggle to be a saint, encourage others and influence others to also become saints. Holy family, thank you. Holy family. Father Hilary Amos, thank you so much. You have used the short time you have to do very big justice to this topic. May God continue to empower you, continue to improve you. Your wisdom will continue to grow in Jesus' name. At this juncture, we have to go for light refreshments and musical entertainment. You will dance, like I said, the other ones know that today we do a lot of musical concerts. What we call it is musical concerts. If you have been opportunity to see our former brochures, you will see the very heavy celebration. So please, DJ, you give us good and wonderful Christian music. Danceable, so that you can dance while the light refreshment will go on. Please, everybody, get seated where you are. If you get to everybody, if I should get to everybody before the people on this side of the table will take. So let them, let me see the ladies, why the cake is still going on. Let me see them and see what we can do. Thank you, thank you, and God bless you all. DJ, waiting.